Happy Sunday, everybody. This is Mrs. Black Gold. Thank you for coming back over to my channel for what is going to be my Dollar Tree Empties reviews. I hope that everyone is having a great Sunday. You've been having an awesome day so far. And um, I have my basket full of empties and reviews. It's not too big. Um, well, the box looks big, but I don't have a lot in here this time as I've had in the past. And it's the end of the month, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. If I have enough time, I hope to do a Dollar Tree book review for you at the end. If not, it may be separate. But let me get started with these Sniders of Hanover Pretzel Rods. And I finally got through this bag. This was a purchase oh so long ago. Um, and then you see the regular, the original price on these, that says $2.99. And so, um, great buy from the Dollar Tree for just a dollar. And they're good. It's not as of Hanover. Pretzels are good. Um, I can't say anything bad about them. I'm not a like to eat pretzels all the time person. Like, that's my snack every week. So, it took me a while to even open the bag. But if you're a pretzel lover, of course, you know that's a great quality pretzel to have. I also got a chance to use these Rothberry Farms Texas Toast Seasoned Croutons. I actually just purchased these, I think it was this week. And I first opened the bag to just snack on them regular, really good croutons. And uh, then my love brought home some salad uh, one day. And so I was able to have them with salad and I devoured the bag. As you see, this is a 2015 Chef's Best Award Excellence. And I looked these up on Walmart's website. And these usually run you about $2 a bag at Walmart. So definitely a great purchase for a uh, dollar. Very good. We finally finished up this Nature Valley Granola Protein Oats and Honey. Um, this is a... 11 ounce bag the dollar tree was carrying these i was able to purchase two bags at once the boys love just snacking on these um as well as just having them with milk and you know in the morning like a bowl of cereal uh, these are also good with warm milk that's how i used to eat them as a child sometimes i want the milk warm but um they're tasty and this has to be at least a three dollar savings at the least um from purchasing them from the dollar tree and not from the regular grocery store so they devoured these a and w pop tarts they were the root beer what does that say yeah the frosted a and w root beer pop tarts the 16 value pack the kids enjoyed these they love them i was even able to pick up two more boxes because i had a coupon that i used at the dollar tree so i would definitely say don't hesitate on buying them if you love the taste of root beer and they all do I wonder if it kind of came across like a root beer float to them with the frosting on the front. So these almond, Italian, excuse me, biscottis with almond. It's by companies called Cambridge and Thames. This was like a purchase for me a couple of times this month. Um, I don't even think I showed you when I repurchased them. But I love these biscotti. I haven't had biscotti in so long with like my coffee. And this actually made me go out yesterday and purchase the Noni's biscotti from Sam's Club because I just realized I like, I've been missing having biscotti. So, but these are a very good brand, very tasty. Even my children love these. And this was a four ounce bag. Yeah, nice crisp biscotti, but tastes good. Okay, you all. This Danish choice, you have the strawberry preserves as well as the orange marmalade. And I didn't know that we were getting a great buy from the Dollar Tree. See, I've de we've devoured both of those. But I didn't know we were getting a great buy on these from the Dollar Tree until I saw these in TJ Maxx when I went and did my little gourmet food haul at TJ Maxx. Like I said, I think, and I can't recall the exact price, but TJ Maxx was selling this, if it wasn't for $2.99, like $3.99. So um, this is a good buy. When I went online trying to find the price of this, I think it's only sold maybe by like to distributors. So wholesale price. I mean, we'll wholesale like a whole bunch of them, you know. But the best before dates on these were November 2018. So we, we had really good shelf life on these marmalades as well. Um, I have repurchased them. When I went back in, all the good flavors were gone. Only black currant is the only one I could find. And I did pick up the black currant. And I enjoy it. My kids don't like the pieces of currant in it. But I have been enjoying it. 
This was a repurchase. I think I've probably shown this before, but they're really good. The Birthday Cake by Bud's Best Cookies. You can't go wrong with those. The kids love those. They remind me of the Birthday Cake Oreos, but a very good quality cookie, the Bud's Best Birthday Cake Cookies. Um, I show this because they don't have this in there all the time. The old El Paso Cheesy Nacho Bowl. It's okay. I mean, we do need to kind of try to stay away from processed foods, um, you know, the whole GMOs. Um, and that's what I realized. A lot of these products that you will find now, it's just not the Dollar Tree. Um, they have to say it. I, I read up a little bit on it, so let me get to the point. Products that say uh, made with par partially made, uh, with genetic engineering. That's just telling you that there are GMOs in the product. And, um, of course, we do want to gear ourselves to purchasing things that are non-GMO. So I'm definitely going to try to stay away from buying the old El Paso cheesy nacho bowls again. I really just need to try to stay away from um, processed foods, period. Anyway, I say that's one of my weaknesses, whether it's cheese puffs. That's like my processed snack that I really like. Um, we've got to try to stay away from those GMOs. But I did learn reading up on the partially made with genetic engineering that even down to the cow, if they feed the cow feed or these whatever animal, chicken, whatever animal it is, if they're giving feed to those animals that have GMOs in them, they must say on the packaging partially made with genetic engineering or that it was made, whatever, completely with genetic engineering. So that's very deep um, when you think about the fact that even down to what they give the cat, the animals to make your products, they need to put that on the packaging. I don't know if a lot of people get Uts in their area, but the Uts crab chip potato chips, and they're made with the Chesapeake Bay crab seasoning, delicious. They were so good. Me and the boys love these. And um, I was kind of looking to see if I guess if it said anything about the genetic engineering. But um, I've read, and I don't want to quote, but uh, some state first started that as far as they made it law that they had to. any Anybody that made, any company, food company, whatever, um, that made stuff with genetic engineering, they had to put it on their packaging. And companies like Snickers make the Mars bars, whatever, because um, you now will see it on that. They um, thought that it, they said that, well, we're not going to just start doing it for one state. And I think it was Vermont. If I'm wrong, you let me know. But um, for instance, they said, we're not going to just start putting on the packaging for products we send to Vermont made with genetic engineering or partially made with genetic engineering. We're going to put it on all of the packaging because it's more cost effective for us. So that's why we are definitely seeing it more often. Um, even if your state doesn't have a law that says that you know that uh, the producers of these foods have to do that they thought that it was just easier and cheaper and most more cost effective for them to just put it on all the packaging so all right the grill mates sauce mixing sesame mesquite and caramelized onion this was really good the boys everybody in the house loved um, how the hamburgers tasted with this so it was really good I would definitely suggest buying it um, sodium on the back, just 340 milligrams of sodium. I sometimes find that when I'm looking at the sodium in products, it doesn't, to me, still mean, um, that it's going to be a salty taste. You sometimes have to add some sea salt for flavor. So I still definitely did. And, oh, speaking of this Cafe Al Fresco, it's a naturally and artificially flavored hazelnut gourmet syrup. The hazelnut, I just was not into this. This is taking this is a sugar-free product, but I was just not into the way this tasted the flavoring. Excuse me, I had this bottle for a very long time. It's been hard for me to get rid of it. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to throw it out. And um it made me say maybe I do need to try the vanilla. So if anybody else has used this Cafe El Fresco in the vanilla or the hazelnut, maybe you like the hazelnut flavor. It was just something about this hazelnut flavor that I did not enjoy. So, it, like I said, it took me a long time to get through it. Um, I put it in my coffee a couple of times, didn't like it. I think I even wanted to try it in some black tea with cream to see if I liked it. And I just did not like the taste of this hazelnut um, syrup. We did reviews on the Sugar Flakes this week, as well as the Apple Bite, Apple Bits. And most of the boys did not enjoy the Apple Bits. Um, one of my boys 
said that it's okay. It's not that it's not edible. I, I'd eat it, my oldest one. And with the sugar flakes, everybody liked the sugar flakes. It's very close to the taste of Frosted Flakes. You have to forgive me. I still didn't get a bowl with milk. I just don't eat cereal like that, really. So I never put this with milk. I did just taste it dry, and it does taste like Frosted Flakes. I even, my baby even preferred these more than he liked the Frosted Flakes, so. And this is just because, bought it from the Dollar Tree, this Norse pasta size cheddar broccoli. It is so good. And in all actuality, I prefer this Nor than the Uncle Ben's uh, broccoli cheese au gratin. I find that when you, uh, this one, has pieces that when you're cooking it, I know it's all dehydrated, even the broccoli, but when you're cooking this one, after it's done, I feel like I have more thicker pieces of broccoli in it, so I really like this one. But my boys do think that the Nors taste just the same as the Uncle Ben's, so. And that is my Dollar Tree review for the empties and so on. Um, I wanted to talk really quickly about this book that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, this really was like one of my first Dollar Tree book purchases. So this has been since probably last year, maybe November, December. But I picked up this book called The Motherhood Diaries. And it's by Rashonda Tate Billingsley. And I bring this book up. That's what Rashonda looks like. I bring this book up because... Mother's Day is right around the corner. That's our next big ho big holiday. You know, Mother's Day is one of the busiest days for restaurants. That's the number one day, Valentine's Day number two. But, so I bring this book up because Mother's Day is around the corner. And let me just read what this is, because this is really what I would want to say as far as about this book and what it's about. It says, this, through, and this is about her book, um... She says, through, or whoever wrote the little insert says, through humorous and enlightening dialogue and narrative, Rashonda chronicles her own journey as well as reveals candid imperfections of a mother trying to balance it all. With humorous and heartwarming stories from other mothers also trying to get it right, the Motherhood Diary shares candid and honest conversations about the good, the bad, and the downright disastrous path of mothering in the new millennium. And when I read this book, it was such a surprising, great read for me. Um, I'm not sure if any mothers like me often just wonder, am I doing a good job? Am I doing things right? And this book helped me, which it was like maybe at a good time, because maybe I was just struggling with feeling like, why can't I get my boys to do certain things? Why can't I get them to behave a certain way? And this helped me to just sit back, take a laugh at things as a mom, and also say, I'm not the only one going through this. Like, it's really somebody else out there who has been in situations like I've been in, who maybe have been in worse situations as a mom. It gave me compassion for other mothers who don't have, who have disabled children. So let me just tell you, um, like it, it said in that little bit of narrative I read on the outside, that... The first, I think it's like 9 to 11, whatever chapters, are what Rashonda Tate Billingsley wrote in regards to her life. But then after that, she has, I'm not sure how clear it is. So like these first are about her life. Then these are all the stories from other moms, and there's some more on the other page. But um, it was so good to get reflections of other people, whether it was from her or whether it was from these other mothers, about their stories and their triumphs, their tribulations of motherhood and what they've gone through. So if anybody out there, and it, and it also may give you appreciation for your mom. If you're not a mother yourself, it may give you a better appreciation for your mother. So I'm just saying that to say this was a great read. Rashawn to Tate Billingsley, I'm so glad you wrote it. It's called The Motherhood Diaries. Um, and I just want to read some of the titles of these stories from the mothers because one of these titles might be uh, something you can relate to. And I, I, like I said again, I just love reading every story. And they're not long stories. They have to keep it short, maybe two to three pages, uh, four pages maybe from each mom. But these were great stories. Uh, one of the titles is Diary of the Overachieving Mom Who Longs for a Drink. Diary of a Forgetful Mom. Diary of a Mom Slash Dad. Diary of an Intuitive Mother. Diary of a Special Needs Mother. Diary of a Grieving Mother, Diary of a Stay-at-Home Mom, 
Diary of an Abusive Mother, Diary of a Single Parent, Diary of the Adoptive Mom, Diary of a Breast Cancer Survivor, Diary of a Wimpy Mom, Diary of the Working Mom, The Balancing Act, Diary of an Aspie Mom, Diary of a Welfare Mom, Diary of a Depressed Mom, Diary of a Stay-at-Home Mom, again, Diary of a Praying Mother, Diary of an Unemployed Mom, Diary of a Mature Mom, Diary of a Mom Trying to Conceive, Diary of a struggling mom, diary of a mom with a disability, with a big heart disability. So, um, this book made me cry, made me laugh, uh, gave me empathy, compassion for m m myself and other moms. So, I can't say much more about this book. Um, it's not so much a book that you might go out into the Dollar Tree and find and buy, even though that's where I purchased it from, but you can definitely order the book. Or re, uh, reserve it at your local library. So I would just say this is a great read, especially with Mother Day, Mother's Day coming up. So I've talked your ear off enough. I appreciate you watching my Dollar Tree Empties reviews as well as this quick review or whatever. If it wasn't quick, this review of um, my first Dollar Tree book. I think that I bought. If it wasn't the first one, it was definitely one of those that was um, some of the first. And I hope to be doing maybe more book reviews because I love to read. I got to get back into that. So nevertheless, now I know we have a lot of things we all got to get back into that we used to do and used to love. Um, but I thank you again for taking the time to watch this because you could be doing anything else. And I hope that everyone has a great week coming up. So you all enjoy the rest of your day. Make this a great day on purpose, and I will be talking to you soon. Take care.